Hello and welcome to this presentation of my project called Artoy. So uh, Artoy is something I'd like to call a uh, virtual home computer. And what I mean by that is that it's uh, well, practically it's only it's a C++ application uh, with a, an embedded Ruby interpreter. Uh, a set of uh, classes that gives you access to uh, audio and graphics, input uh, and timers and such, and then also a set of Ruby files that takes advantage of this. So, so it's nothing special in that sense. So what I mean with home computer is that I try to uh, design it in such a way that it mimics certain aspects of of the home computers of the uh, 80s and early 90s, uh, the kind of computers that me and uh, other people of my generation grew up with and learned to program on. Uh, and specifically, I want a system that's more understandable and uh, maybe consistent than what you would get uh, when you program on a, on a, a normal modern computer. I mean, a, you can't really understand how a, a modern computer is put together with hardware and software. I mean, I understand most parts of it, but nothing in in, in detail. Uh, and uh, that's only because I've been around for for a long time. Uh, whereas a um, home computer like a Commodore 64, you could you could understand it. You can you could disassemble the the ROM and uh, you could uh, read through the ROM and basically understand most of the the operating systems. And you you could target any hardware directly without going through the operating system and it was not only uh, possible it was also kind of the normal way of doing it and and in, in doing it this way it was it was easy to learn experiment and understand and uh, that's what I'm trying to uh, to accomplish here kind of so I'll take a, a simple example again this is our toy running here uh, so one of the first things maybe that you would do when trying out a new language or a new environment is to try to print something on the screen. Uh, like that. Uh, and maybe you, you, you're satisfied there, it, it, it prints, but maybe you also wonder, like, how does printing text work? I mean, where does it appear? So there's a cursor, uh, but can you put text in other places in the cursor? Uh, and what is text? What are characters, really? Uh, and then hopefully you will come to understand that, yes, this is just a, a grid of, of tiles, of, of graphical objects, and you can, you can put text anywhere on the screen, uh, and you can uh, redefine uh, the characters to other graphics because they are just pixels. Uh, I'll show you more on that later. Uh, and so that's kind of the things I'm going to show you a bit here. Uh, so right now I'm just demonstrating uh, uh, some things uh, about the the console, which is one of four layers here. Uh, this display here is, uh, it consists of the background, uh, the text console, a canvas for drawing uh, pixel graphics, and on top of that is a sprite layer for, for putting sprites. And you can use that all together to, to you know, program games and such. So let's do what it says here. Let's say help. And there's a tutorial. Uh, and the tutorial is a Ruby file. Just a simple Ruby file with snippets of code that you can comment and uncomment uh, to experiment with. Now, since I just played with this, I think I actually have some code down here that I should comment out before we do this. So, we already saw, we already seen print, let's, let's go down here and we uncomment this line here. So now this is the only line in the file that is, uh, does not have a comment character in front of it. And if we press F5, this code will run, and we press F5 to get back to the editor again. So this is uh, one of those classical effects that you, well, was maybe one of the first things you did on your Commodore 64. 
there is an entire book about it. Uh, you can create a simple maze by just randomizing between two different uh, diagonal uh, characters. Okay, let's move on here to uh, this is we hook up an event handler by calling on drag which uh, lets us specify uh, some code that will be called anytime you drag the mouse to a position and you might be able to guess what will happen if I run this a very primitive paint program and we can do a little bit better by actually both hooking up the on click handler and the on drag handler so here when you click the mouse we will save the coordinate and when you drag the mouse we'll draw a line from the saved coordinate to the new coordinate and replace the saved coordinate and that gives you a continuous line instead which is more what you would see in a normal paint program okay so back to the, this uh, ball function that I just commented out and I now have to comment back in again so yeah this editor is very primitive it's around 300 lines of Ruby code uh, of course at some point I want a better editor but for now this will have to do uh, so let's let's look at this function def introduces a function by the way and this function will load an image from disk it will create a sprite and move it to a random position on the screen it will create a random velocity and then it will call this twin function which I will talk more about uh, in a bit for now uh, just uh, know that these four lines of code will be executed repeatedly for 10 seconds uh, the position of the ball will be increased by velocity and if we hit the edges of the screen we will reverse the x or y uh, factor of the velocity and after 10 seconds we will remove the ball and okay nothing happened because I don't call the function and let's call it like it says let's call it 100 times we get 100 bouncing balls and I guess now in the video this will look kind of jerky because of the frame rate but in reality this is pretty smooth you can have a lot of, of these okay I think that was it yeah. okay let's uh, maybe move on to something a bit more advanced I, I mentioned tweening so let's uh, let's take a look at a uh, an example that uses tweening so here again we load an image and now we call the split function which splits the image into 20 by 2 so 40 new images and uh, we then call add sprite for each image and that will, will will be returned here in sprite so sprite becomes sprites becomes an array of images and then for each sprite we do this we first we scale the position of the sprite to the new scale that we have before so we will that's in preparation for the animation that's coming here so here we call the tween function I talked about earlier so tweening if you don't know is a way of animating properties of an object over time uh, that's all it, all it is more or less uh, it was I learned about it from programming action script and flash and it's also there's also I think it's pretty popular in, in in JavaScript and web programming as well it's a very easy way to to uh, move around UI objects and text and things uh, so here we say we should we will tween this sprite over three seconds we will move it from a random position on the screen and from a random rotation and to this scale so you can call both from and to to say which direction that the tween will go uh, and we do this for all the sprites so it will end up at the original position but it will start from this position here and if you run this code we get this nice little effect 
Uh, there's also, like I said, you can also, besides graphics, so you can of course do audio. I have this little piece of code. I'm not gonna explain this, because this code is a bit more complex. Oh, I can just mention that, yes, this code uh, sets up the white keys and the black keys of a piano by drawing rectangles and then creating kind of a lookup table for those rectangles to the corresponding notes. Uh, and then we again hook up the click and drag handlers uh, so that we can play this, these notes when we click the, the, the corresponding keys. Uh, and let's hope I have sound. So that's audio, and that was Sprite's tweeting audio. Let's look at some games. Let's start with Snake. Snake is Snake was one of the first uh, first games I made for our toy. Uh, it's a very simple game. It's, uh, it, it's it's particularly easy to make on a on a home computer with a tile-based graphics because you can, or text, if you have a text screen you can just, this is 110 lines of code, uh, let's look at it first, uh, not surprising. So um, uh, what I want to show you is like, a lot of like early games you did was just based on text because it was so easy, you didn't have to draw any graphics, you could just play with what you had, but uh, we're gonna move on to, quickly move on to another game here. Just Sokoban. So this game also uses the console and, and draws tiles, just like Snake did, except Snake used existing characters in the font, but Sokoban uses graphics. So we can take a look at this setup tiles function here. Uh, it loads a tile sheet. This is a set of uh, tiles, images. They are all 64 by 64 pixels laid out. And then again, we use the, uh, the split function of image to create one image per tile. And we take all of these tiles and we define new tiles in the, in the console. Uh, so now, whenever we try to, to use a character, type a character to the console that is 256 and higher, we will instead get uh, some graphics from this tile sheet. Uh, I'm not going to show you... I'm going to... I'm not going to explain the rest of the code. This is a little bit longer than Snake. It's about 170, at li 170 lines of code. It uh, does things like it loads levels, it renders the level, it checks if uh, all the boxes are in the correct position, uh, etc. It looks like this. Yeah, we have one box done. And then we do this, and now we are in an unwinnable state. Okay, I, I'm gonna stop there before it becomes too much. And I'll just say that this is an open source project, it's on GitHub, uh, it's written in C++, it's fairly easy to port, uh, it works on the web. You can go to uh, uh, apone.org slash toy to play with it there. Uh, and I hope uh, that this, this will uh, inspire at least one or two people to help out eventually. Okay, thank you.